Hello, and welcome to Talking Sense, a Pittsburgh Works Together interview series featuring our region's most influential leaders. We'll get their perspectives on jobs, the economy, and other topics vital to Pittsburgh's progress. I'm Jerry Snagy, and on today's episode, I speak with two special guests from Operating Engineers Local 66, Robin McGee and Denny Manown. Robin and Denny take us inside the local's apprenticeship programs available to aspiring heavy equipment operators and mechanics, and the family sustaining jobs of their members. We hope you enjoy this insightful and informative discussion. Robin and Denny, thank you so much for joining us today. Robin, I'll start with you. Can you give us a little background about your experience with the Operating Engineers number 66? So I'm a graduate apprentice. Uh, I've been in for 13 years. And last October, I joined up at the apprenticeship site as, a, as an instructor. Awesome. And Denny, can you give me a little background about your experience uh, as well, including okay. that Robin was one of your students? Yeah, she was one of my <laughs> students. It went a long, long time ago. Uh, I'm the apprenticeship coordinator. Uh, so my job is to look after the apprentices on the job and training to make sure that it's done right, their classroom training's done. I also interview and all that stuff. Uh, I'm a 36-year member. And I've been at the training site for 20 years now. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Yeah, so, Can you give us a little background about the programs and the training opportunities through Western Pennsylvania Operating Engineers? Okay, so we have two apprenticeship uh, programs at our training site up in New Alexandria, PA. One is being in an operated class where we teach you how to run heavy machinery. The second class is the bulldozer or a mechanics class where we teach you how to work on the different various types of equipment. Uh, they're both four years in length. Uh, the only difference between the mechanics program and the operators program is the length of the length of the man hours that you need to graduate. You need four thousand hours to graduate our program uh, through the operators. Plus, you have to qualify on five uh, pieces of a different qu equipment. Whereas with the mechanics program, it's a six thousand hour program. Uh, well, that's so the man hours is kind of the only difference there. And what type of pre-qualifications do people need to enter your programs, if any? Can you kind of walk us through what yes. that looks like? Uh, you need to be 18, uh, a high school diploma or GED. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to pass a drug test and a DOT physical and, and the willing to learn. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's like no really pre prerequisite other than like the one that she's kind of mentioned. Yeah. I mean, naturally, you would want to have some hand, foot, eye coordination. Sure. Mm -hmm. Is one of the things. Yeah. Most, most kids today with the gaming techniques and the things of that nature. They know those things already. <laughs> yeah. A lot of them do, yeah. Yeah. Sure. So I guess that kind of goes into my next question, which is, what if someone has no mechanical or construction experience? Can they come to you and say, hey, I'm interested in a career? Yeah. Almost oh, definitely. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's not really, like I said, it's not really a prerequisite. I mean, that's, there are things that you can learn. Sure. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, by doing it repetitively and doing the things of that nature. Uh, so, you know, take a young young man or a woman and bring them into the business. I've seen them go from not being able to hit the ground with the bucket, so to speak. Well, one of the things is they, they're coming out. They're not, even though you're called a journey person, like me, myself, I didn't consider myself a journeyman until probably five years or six years after I graduated. And how I did that is by going out and working on the jobs, being mm -hmm. around my brothers and sisters, because every day you're out there, you're learning. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, you know, the day you yeah. think you know everything is the day you, you, you cut yourself off. And that's right. not only with the opera engineers, that's anything you do in life. Uh, but I mean, to me, that's, that's, that's like a continue. It's always learning, like I said, because like just when you graduate and you think you never have to go to school again, but you do because uh, we have different certifications that you have to keep up. Mm-hmm. You know, as far as like a hazmat sticker or an MSHA uh, training, you know, they're, they're like annual training, forklift trainings every three years. Right. There's things of that nature that you're always going back to the school for. And then there's always new technologies coming up. And what about women in the apprenticeship program is, do you see many women come through the mm -hmm. program and how does that work? And are there any special programs that they can participate in? Well, I came through the apprenticeship program, so I, I would encourage any woman uh, that is interested. It's it's a, a great career. Mm -hmm. um, the apprenticeship helps you build a solid foundation uh, for on-the-job training. You're p being paid to learn your skill. Um, 
and at the same time, you're earning a great wage and, and benefits. Right. And do you so. see a lot more women coming through the program now versus years ago? Yeah. Yeah. We, we definitely have a lot more women coming in. Um, and it's really encouraging to see how women coming into non-traditional right. Role. roles. What I've seen in the, the 20 years of myself with the training program, uh, it's definitely uptake on women. Yeah. Most definitely. Uh, and they are some of our finest skilled operators. Uh, we actually yeah. had a woman down here uh, on the bridge where they had the, the Pat bus collapsed mm -hmm. and with that stuck on the bridge. Sure. Uh, we had a, a young lady down there running one of the largest cranes at the time down there, oh, wow. setting the steel and the concrete and the things of that nature. I didn't yeah. really even know what the operating engineers was. Right. Uh, right. I had a friend that, that worked in the office and she says, you need to fill out an application, right? I mean, my husband is in the Millwright Union, so I had an idea of what the unions were, but sure. I really didn't know what I was getting into. Um, and little did I know that day... Right, it was gonna change my life. Mm -hmm. What about the training facility? Can you? It's quite impressive. So, can you tell us a little bit about um, what types of training that you offer there? Obviously, but also what types of different tools and training um, things that the training facility holds. It's definitely like you said. It's a pretty impressive place. We have over close to three hundred acres of property up there. Mm -hmm. uh, we have over eighty or to ninety different pieces of equipment. Uh, the training, we have three large classrooms that hold up to 50 people at a time. Uh, so we can do large classes or we can do small classes. Uh, we have two mechanic training rooms. Uh, we've got a computer room now that you mentioned because some of our training is done on a computer with the, the crane certifications. So we've definitely from 1989 when I started to 2024, right. the site has definitely improved. And like I said, uh, we're always updating our equipment from the GPS, different types of GPS mm -hmm. equipment, uh, to the new crane we bought, what, two years ago? Mm -hmm. We bought a, a MLC 100, I believe it is. It's a Manawak crane with 120 foot of boom in it with all the latest computers and technology on it. Uh, last year, we bought a brand new excavator. Like I said, crane and excavator. <laughs> uh, we bought a brand new excavator. And this year here, uh, the guys are going to go pick up. We bought a brand new uh, sheep's foot compactor with a blade on it. So that's one of the machines, uh, like that's entry level for the apprentices. Sure. So we are, we have a lot, a lot of investment, but not only between the union side of it, but with the contractors, you know, it wouldn't, if it wasn't for the contractors and investing in, in our programs, uh, any of the trades, we wouldn't be able to survive. And so after the apprenticeship program, can you give me an example of a career path for someone benefits and yeah, so we have a lot of different avenues you can uh, to uh, you can go through as an uh, after your to the program. Uh, there's different types of work. There, there's heavy highway industry. There's the building industry. We have a pipeline industry. Um, we also have a demolition industry. Uh, and all any way you go through them, any of them different avenues I mentioned, you have healthcare. Mm -hmm. You have a pension. You have an annuity plan also. So retirement is one of the key things. So every day you could be doing something different. Absolutely. Well, most definitely. Yeah. yeah. That's that's what's nice about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's what keeps you wanting to come back. Come back, right? Sure. It's not the same thing over and over yeah. every day, day in and day out. It, yeah. It's always changing. And everybody you talk to, from Robin to we have what nine other instructors up the train site. Everybody you talk to at our train site has a different story. Mm -hmm. How they got there, what they did. Uh, and most, most of the people, you know, from generation to generation, you know, like I talked to my dad and all my dad's like, I'll never be, I would never be able to do what you guys do today because of the technology and the different sure. things that are out there, you know. Seems so different. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most definitely. Yep. That's for sure. So it helps. It's a career that helps to provide a family sustaining wage. Oh, most well definitely. Well beyond. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well Absolutely. beyond. Yeah. And Robin and Denny, if people want to learn more about the operating engineers, where can they go to find you? Oh, okay. So we have a website, WPAoperators.org. Uh, we all are, so that's on the web. Uh, we also have the, a, you can call us on phone. We do outreach programs uh, for groups of students. So if you have a group of high school kids that want to stop up, you can reach out to us. We'll have you come up to the site, do things that way. 
nothing of that nature. Great. That's sort of that's sort of what I do. Fantastic. Well, thank you both so much for being here with us today and sharing all of this great information. And thank you so much for watching this episode of Talking Sense. And please join us again for future episodes. Mm -hmm.